Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. I guess you could call this a homemade equation, even though anyone can come up with something like this. Pretty easy, I'll show you. So we have f of x plus y divided by f of x multiplied by f of y, and that is equal to x plus y all over xy, the product. So looking at this equation, can you guess what f of x is gonna look like? I say look like because there could be a bunch of different solutions, right? We didn't talk about anything like, is f continuous? What is the domain? What is the range? We're gonna get into that a little bit. But here's what, what I want you to understand. When you see the correspondence, like f of x plus y against x plus y, and this product against that product, aren't you thinking that, hey, f of x, if f of x is equal to x, then this will work. Why? Because f of x equals x implies f of y equals y, which is good. And it also implies f of x plus y equals x plus y. Because if f of x is x, in other words, the identity function, kind of like the one in multiplication on, or zero in addition, even though they're not exactly the same, but they're both identity elements. When you compose f of x with something else, another function, you'll get the same function from either side. That's why it's identity. So, because f of x, identity means that the input and the output are the same. It's unchanged, okay? So, if your input is x plus y, the output will be the same. Does that make sense? So, couldn't we just say that, hey, f of x equals x is a solution, and that is the only solution? Well, that's kind of dangerous. You, you don't want to say that because you don't know. You have to have proof, right? You have to have some type of evidence that shows that there are no other solutions. Yes, f of x equals x works. Guess and check. Easy to do, right? And then if you can prove that there are no other solutions, either by proof by contradiction or something else, let's say you can assume, okay, suppose g of x is another solution, which is not x, and then you can arrive at, at a contradiction which is probably very difficult to do, right? Who knows? But uh, we can also proceed differently. Yes, looking at it this way, kind of simplistically, tells us uh, that yes, f of x equals x is a solution, but that doesn't guarantee that's the only solution. So have a, to have a better look, we're gonna rearrange these terms. So we want uh, x plus y is to be together on the same side. In other words, if you divide both sides by x plus y, you're going to get the following. f of x plus y will be divided by x plus y. And then, if you multiply both sides by f of x, f of y, the product, it's basically like this. These two things are being multiplied, like the cross products have to be equal, right? In other words, this implies that xy, f of x plus y equals x plus y f of x, f of y. Of course, we have to be careful not to make, we have to make sure that x and y are not zero, f of x and f of y are not zero too. And we can look at it towards the end, why that's the case. But now, you can safely say that, okay, these two things are being multiplied. These two things, right? So we could switch them around. Make sense? So in other words, if a over b is c over d, then B and C can switch, and this implies A over C equals B over D. Same thing, AD equals BC, AD equals BC. Make sense? But that's just another way to look at it. So by switching those around, we're actually putting this in a nicer form, which I'll tell you why. Now, X plus Y and X plus Y are on the same side. That's a good thing. But not only is that the good thing, there's another one. We can also split this into f of x over x multiplied by, because that's a product, right? f of y over y. Now, why is this important? Because we can now rename one of these things. For example, I can call this f of x, if f of x is a function of x under certain conditions, f of x divided by x will also be a function of x. Under certain conditions, I say, because maybe if f of x equals x, then f of x divided by x would be 1, a constant function, which pretty much has the whole real numbers as the domain, right? 
So it makes a difference. If there's an X in F of X, it'll cancel out. Originally, it wasn't in the domain, but now it can be in the domain, so on and so forth. Anyways, a lot of things to talk about, but I don't want to talk about them right now. But here's what I want to say. We can call this G of X. And that name gives us a lot of freedom and good things. For example, if f of x over x is g of x, in other words, g of x is f of x over x, what happens if you replace y, x with y on both sides? You get g of y equals f of y over y. These are free variables, right? You can basically replace them with anything you want as long as they're in the domain. And y is unknown, so we can pretty much do it, right? But it gives us that, okay, this is g of y. If this is g of x, then this is g of y. And more importantly, this is g of x plus y. And you're like, why? Because if you replace x with x plus y, you get g of x plus y, which is f of x plus y divided by x plus y. Does that make sense? So writing our functional equation this way is a huge advantage. First of all, I just want to emphasize that. And now we're going to get into the solution. So this gives us g of x plus y equals g of x times g of y. And thanks to Cauchy, this is a Cauchy type of equation. And you can definitely do some transformation if you don't like the fact that there are different Cauchy equations and you just want to stick with the linear version, that's okay. But I'm just going to tell you, this function g is kind of like a, is it a homomorphism? Something like that takes the sum and turns it into a product. Isn't that cool? So what kind of function can do that? Think about it. All the functions you know, maybe sine, cosine, maybe e to the power x, maybe ln x. Think about it. For example, if g is ln x, right, then what is that going to do to the sum? Nothing. Because ln of a sum is nothing. I mean, it is ln of a sum, but it's not like ln of a product, right? So Maybe g of x is, so this didn't work, e to the power x, then g of x plus y is going to be e to the power x plus y. So what? This can be split up. So there you go. The exponential function takes the sum and turns it into a product so that you can split it out. In other words, g of x needs to be exponential. So is it e to the power x? Not necessarily there can be a constant like k, right? Uh-oh, that didn't work because if you assume g of x is k e to the x, then g of y would be k e to the y. Then their product is going to be k squared, but you are supposed to have k on the left-hand side, which means k squared equals k, which means k is 0 or 1. So what's the point of writing k then if it's 1, right? Forget about k. And let's use k, but in a different way. How about e to the power kx? Does that work? Let's test it out. You can always test it, right? Just make a conjecture, a guess, and then you can test it out. Now, if g of x is e to the power kx, which implies that g of x plus y is e to the power k times x plus y, which is e to the power kx plus ky, which can be split into e to the kx times e to the ky, and boom. Yes, Houston, we have success. Great. Awesome. So then this works. But what does that mean? It's exponential, but e to the power kx. Couldn't we just say that, wait a minute, couldn't g of x just be a to the power x? Sure. That would work as well. Why? Because then this would be a to the y, and if you multiply them, right? G of x, G of y. I was like, for a split second, like, am I doing the right thing? Probably. This gives you a to the power x plus y, which is G of x plus y by definition, right? Look, by definition, it's true. Great. So which one is it? I'm confused. Is it e to the kx or a to the x? I would say both. Depends on the value of k. Absolutely, you can find an appropriate k value so that this is true. Because guess what? e to the kx equals a to the x basically means that you're assuming that, uh-oh, a is e to the power k for some constant, which can be done, right? So you can change the base. Yes, that can be done. Whichever you like. I mean, if you like a to the x, a is any number, including e, by the way. So that's kind of like a, I don't know, more general expression. I guess we, we're going to go with a to the x, doesn't matter. If g of x is a to the x, 
what do you know about f of x and g of x? Well, g of x is f of x divided by x by our assumption, right? So from here, to keep a long story short, sorry, I kept it too long. I just wanted to explain every single step so you can see my uh, thought process and also, I don't know, what else? Something else. So the whole thing. So f of x can be written as x times a to the power of x. But wait a minute, at the very beginning, we had this equation, right? And let's go back to the very beginning, beginning of time. Now, x plus y over x, y. And we said that, hey, from here, f of x equals x seems to work. And it does, but are you now saying that it is not just x, but x times a to the power x? Yes, that's also true. How can they both be true? It's true because if a is 0, then f of x becomes x. So everybody is happy. If a is 1, then f of x will be... Wait a minute, did I say a equals 0? Okay, sorry about that. If a is 1, that's what I meant, I guess. If a is 1, then f of x equals x. If a is 0, then f of x will be 0 identically, right? And that means... Zero also works, and the reason why it does is, actually, it doesn't work, never mind. You know why it doesn't work? Because if you look at the original problem, this can't be zero, then otherwise you're going to be looking at something like zero divided by zero. Yes, we changed the equation, we found some solutions, but A equals zero, unfortunately, out of the question. It's not a solution. We got to make sure that it's not in the domain, okay? Anyways, is there another way to approach this problem? I'd like to hear from you because, by the way, I was wondering if ChatGPT can solve this problem. Probably if you allow it to think deeper, maybe not with a quick response because with the quick response, it's kind of junk. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus PI, which is a channel that focuses on complex numbers. And also check out the membership options. See you next time and bye-bye.